you were talking about accessibility with web browsers or charts you're talking about is the font size big enough for me to read it or is the contrast strong enough that I can read the text or see all of the data elements. So there's a lot of people who browse the web using a screen reader and basically the screen reader just uh, reads out the content aloud to the user. And I think as web developers, it's really important for us to take responsibility and level the playing field as much as possible um, so that people using screen readers can still get information out of our charts. So what I'm using is called Chrome Vox and it's a Chrome extension. If you're using Chrome, it's free. I'd recommend it. Or if you're not using Chrome, you can either Google your operating system plus screen reader if you want a software or your web browser plus screen reader if you want a browser extension and for it to only work within your browser. They all work a little bit differently, but there are some standards that make them pretty similar. There's the standard that's used on the web for accessibility. It's called YARIA. So all the screen readers are going to be able to read something if we put it in that format. Yeah, let's go ahead, turn it on, and see what happens when we focus our chart right now. Auto completion. 1, 3, 10, 16, 27, 36, 40, 51, 37, 43, 42, 32, 22, 5, me. Chrome box is now inactive. Okay, so as we can see, it just went in our SVG element and started reading all of the text that we have in there. Now, this is more accessible than, say, a raster image, which wouldn't give any information at all unless we had an alt tag, but it's still not very meaningful. It's kind of just reading numbers without any information about the context. So the first thing we can do is assign a role to our chart. Um, so for our wrapper, we're gonna add a role attribute. And let's tell the screen reader that this has a role of figure. And what role is doing is it's telling the screen reader what type of content this is. All right, so the other thing we wanna do here is make sure the screen reader knows that this is an element that's tabbable too. Um, so in order to do that, we'll add an attribute or um, a tab index and set that to zero. Now with tab index, you can really set any number that you want. And this is going to, when you're tabbing between elements in a web page, it'll uh, determine in what order you, they are tabbed to. So items with a lower number will be tabbed to before items with a higher number. Uh, generally, you want to stick with either zero if it's tabbable or negative one if you don't want it to be tabbable. So for whatever reason, if you don't want a button to be able to be tabbed to, and you generally want to stick with zero or negative one. Otherwise, it, it gets a little bit hacky if you're setting each tab index individually. So now we can see we can tab to our chart. Um, we can tell by this black outline in Chrome that it's focused. And the second thing we can do is we can add an SVG element called title. It's not going to render anything and it's just there for accessibility purposes to tell users what is the title of our chart, a little bit of information about it. So we can append a new title element and inside of that, let's just add a little bit of information about our chart. So this is a histogram looking at the uh, distribution of humidity and we're looking at the year um, 2019. All right, so histogram looking at the di distribution of humidity over 2019. All right, so let's see what happens when we turn our screen reader on again. Instagram looking at the distribution of humidity over 2019 1 3 10 16 27 30 chrome box is now inactive okay so this is a good start we have it announcing kind of a overview of what the chart is 
So the person using the screen reader can decide if they want to explore it a little bit more or if they don't. All right, so the next thing we want to do is let's go down to our bins group. Um, so this is all of our elements. And what we want to do here is first of all, make it tabable and give it a role of list so that the screen reader knows that this is a list of items and then also add a label so they know what the list is of. And let's just add this role. It's a list. And we also want it to be tabable to so tab index index. And let's set that to zero so that you can tab to it. Um, so now you can see we can tab from our chart in general to the list and items with the list will have some special features for the screen reader. Um, so they'll read out the label. Um, so let's say this is a list of histogram bars. And then the user will also have an option to skip the list or to read out the individual list items. So let's see what this sounds like. Histogram looking at the distribution of humidity over 2019 histogram bars mean 0 0.30 histogram bars. List with zero items. All right, so that was the special functionality. Chromebox is now inactive. For lists, it'll say this is a list and this is how many items it has. And you might have noticed that it has zero items right now. Um, that's because we haven't added any items. So let's go ahead and for each of our bin groups, let's make sure they're tabable too. So let's just grab this tab index here. So now you should be able to tab through each one of these bars. Let's assign a role. So instead of list, this is going to be list item. And then we'll also want a label for each of these list items. And we want to give the user some information about the bar that they're focused on. So uh, because this is a D3 attribute, we can grab the data point and let's say something about there were Let's read the count. So that is Y accessor of that item. So this is the same thing we're doing for these labels um, where we're grabbing that Y value. Um, and so there are this many days between, and let's also tell them the bottom, the lowest humidity and the highest humidity within that bar. So that's going to be d.x0. And then we also want um, the top of that bound. So d.x1. Let's just say humidity levels. So let's see what this sounds like when it taps through each of these list items. Histogram bars. List with 14 items. All right, so we have 14 items now. So let's hit tab. There were one days between 0 0.3 and 0 0.35 humidity levels. There were three days between 0 0.35 and 0 0.4 humidity levels. There were 10 days between 0 0.4 and 0 0.45 humidity levels. There were 16 days between 0 0.45 and 0 0.5 humidity levels. Okay, great. So were, we can tab through were, them quickly as well. There were there were five days between 0 0.95 and 1 humidity levels. Filter. Histogram looking at the distribution of humidity over 2019 histogram bars mean 0 0.30, 0 0.35, 0 0.40, 0 0.45. Chrome box is now inactive. Okay, so we learned two things there. One is that um, this label is great. It's reading out the count for each bar and then the bottom of the top humidity level for that bar. Um, and it also lets the user tab through them quickly if you know they're trying to get to a specific humidity level. Uh, the other thing we learned is that 
when the entire SVG is selected, it's still reading out all of the text in there, other than the ones in our list, which includes mean and our x-axis labels. Um, so the way we make sure that it's not going to read out, um, say, this mean label is we can go ahead and set it to have a role of presentation, which um, it's just a presentation element. And then, um, so let's set that, a role of presentation. And also um, there's another attribute to make sure our screen reader is not reading it, which is aria hidden is true. So while this mean label is nice to have visually, um, with a screen reader, it might just be too distracting and also just out of context for it to read that. So let's also grab these and put them on our x-axis as well. Um, let's see if this works. And also that label. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Instagram looking at the Histogram looking at the distribution of humidity over 2019 histogram bars. Chrome box is now inactive. All right, great. So while this isn't perfect, this is hopefully a good foundation for uh, you to make your charts at least basically accessible to a screen reader. Um, so that right now they can learn about the chart in general and then they can tab through each of the individual bars to say there were a specific data point that they were interested in. If you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video.